and welcome to another episode of 100 Ways to Make 100K, the show where we're on the hunt to find 100 different ways to make 100 grand a month. Now, this next entrepreneur is changing the world one piece of cornbread at a time. Now, Shanae and her business partner, Jason, started a little restaurant called Honey Soul Food in Toronto's West End that has evolved into a cornbread phenomenon that's made an appearance at every single event in Toronto. Listen, if your corporate menu or your catering menu doesn't have any cornbread on it, I will be staying home. So I can't wait to give Shanae an opportunity to introduce herself. And I can't wait for one day for you to try this cornbread. Hey. I'm Shanae. I am the owner of Honey Soul Food and of Cornbread Cafe. I am 29 as of right now. Um, Capcorn baby. Oh God, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have no idea what those means. Like the whole sure. astrology. Yeah, yeah, of, of course, I don't. I but know, everyone that. says I'm a Capricorn, so I'm hardworking and stuff. I'm just like, okay. Yeah. I could have been born in April and still be hardworking. I was just curious, like, you, you just introduced yourself as hardworking. So mm. why why do you work so hard? I feel like I work hard because it's just something that's in me. I don't know any different. I have dreams and I have goals. Okay. And I'm just working towards them, whether that's working hard or barely working mm. we're, walking, we're, we're working towards those goals yeah so what are, what are they i mean i'm curious as to what those goals were before you started and maybe how they've kind of shifted to now what how far along the journey are you in now like how many was this like year two year three so we are walking into year three of the restaurant we opened up officially in 2021 nice. and um but i've had this place since 2020 so one of my goals back then and still now is to further the work of ending generational poverty. That's something I'm very passionate about. Mm -hmm. And that's just in the sense of being able to provide for the people who work for me in a capacity that's above the normal. And it's important to me because I am the product of generational poverty being broken. Yeah. And I don't know why I just felt like I needed a social mission yeah. and it kind of just dawned on me so that i am the example that i want to show hmm. so what so maybe you could give us a little bit of like an origin story you know take us back to uh before you became sweet as you know honey honey honey, honey um, sweetie <laughs> so i was born one very cold night in it january was a cold cold january <laughs> night <laughs> my mom had said to me very cold that night and I was born um, but I've always kind of grown I'm the middle child and I kind of always grew up in entrepreneur roles okay or in leadership roles mm. I was part of the leadership program when I was in grade six grade seven grade eight grade nine by choice by force by choice okay by choice I've always been thrown into leadership positions and I've always excelled in it yeah um, I was the president of my school. Um, okay, that's, that's the dirt off your shoulders a little right, bit, my bad. Right, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Um, in a point, I did it for two years running when it's just not a thing um, to do it back to back, but mm. I was always great at it. I was in leadership in high school. I was on the trustee for my school for um, in high school. Yeah, yeah. And then I essentially just came into this hospitality industry and... Um, I started off as a host okay. at like 17 or something, 16, 17. Yeah. And I did that until I was able to start serving at 18. And literally, I only have a few months, I would say, of serving experience. Okay. Because then right after that, they made me a manager. They're just oh, like, wow. you need your more than this. Okay. Um, so, so sorry. I have a year of serving experience because at 19, I was a manager. Mm. And then ever since 19, I've just been managing restaurants. So wow. like I'm wearing this brand is called the youngest in charge. And it's just like, I've always literally been the youngest person in charge yeah. and it comes with it's good and it's bad. But once you're meant to be in this role, you're meant to be in this role. Jeez. Okay. My bad. A little middle child syndrome showing right now. Is that it? <laughs> is that it? I thought we were the ne neglected ones. I mean, Hey, you're fighting, you're fighting to be in charge, right? So what, uh, when did you kind of realize that you wanted to start your own business? Always. Really? Yeah. Like, like from the jump, from, even when you started hosting, like you're like. From the jump, like before that even, like mm -hmm. I remember like when I wanted to be a singer. Okay. I was just Sing like. a little something. Sing. No, don't, don't, don't. You know, no, 
<laughs> it's wild. My family used to call me Whitney when I was a kid. Mm. But then I think I used to be able to really sing when I was younger. And now it's just like I can get by. Yeah. But like barely. <laughs> <laughs> but like when I wanted to be a singer, I wanted my own. I wanted my own like recording label. Mm. Right. When I wanted to be a writer, I wanted my own um, like publishing house. OK. When I wanted to be a doctor, I wanted my own practice. I was never going to be. Cool. Let me go work for somebody and see what happens. Yeah. Never. Yeah, that's it's interesting to see like some people are just like drawn towards ownership, you know, and I almost I almost wonder why. But I mean, we'll save that for another episode now. So you're doing all this serving, you're doing all this managing. Like, do you remember the first time you made 100 grand in a year? Yeah, 100 grand in a year. Yeah. Yeah. In a year. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That was our first year being open here, honey. Okay, yeah. so it wasn't until you actually started your own business. Yes. So it's not like I didn't. I didn't know maybe you were serving at some like upper class thing. Oh, where you absolutely make not. Racks. I mean, if there I is know. a server making a hundred k in a year, beloved. <laughs> <laughs> I, I almost wonder if, as a server, if you got that, if you still would have wanted to get your own, start your own business. You know, there's. I, w- I was talking to so many people that end up getting like enough money in a job that keeps them comfortable, not wanting to start their own thing. And they they call it being stuck in the middle where they're just like rich enough, but not rich enough to actually be rich, you know? Yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't be in that position. Mm. I just the idea that even if you're making good money, you still have to report to somebody. Yeah. And whether you like what you're reporting to and about, you still got to do it. And I'm the kind of person I'm too much of a creative individual. So even Mm -hmm. at my last job that I was at, it was an amazing place. Mm -hmm. Um, And I love being there. I love my staff. I loved all of it. But my level of creativity was too much. Mm -hmm. Like I would like create drinks and put it on the menu. And Mm -hmm. then people would be coming in and asking for a froze. Hey, can we get a froze? Froze. It was a frozen rosé. Okay, like, okay. You, know, you made it. It was so okay. good. Peach schnapps. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People were coming in and asking for it. And then they'd be like, hey, why are your rosé sales a little bit off? And it's just like, because we're punching it in that way. But they're getting something else. Mm. And, like, they would love the idea. But if, when head office came in, they're just like, can't we can't, we can't, we can't do frosés today. And it's yeah. just like, it sucks, right? And I saw what I was doing for that company. And I was just like it's time for me to do it on my own. So at 26, I was like, let's do it. So how did you know it was time? Was it like a gut feeling? Was there, you know, and like what what place of your life were you in? Because a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, I need need like cushion before I start a business. It's so risky. I need this safety net, right? Like what, maybe you could describe like what types of things were happening in your life at the time when you really got started. Yeah, so when we started, so initially it was my dad and I, who opened up the restaurant Mm -hmm. and the concept of working together. Um, When we started, it was before COVID and we were actually opening up a hotel in Jamaica. Oh, wow. Okay. So that was the move. That was the mission. That's what we were going to do. Yeah. But then COVID hit and we're just like, everything is on shutdown. We don't know what's going to happen. There's no Mm. more, there's no point of investing more money into a hotel in Jamaica when we don't know what's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. And did you guys already start? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. so uh, my dad had land down there. Um, he sent materials and all these kind of stuff down there. Equipment, uh, got an architect and stuff. Like, we were ready. in motion. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, so those stuff are kind of just chilling down there. I'm not sure what the status of that is anymore. Yeah, okay. But um, You know what the status of this is, though. I know what the status <laughs> of this is one is. But essentially, we were just like, let's pivot. And he said, I will give you some money, whatever you want to do with it, make make it work. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. I want a restaurant. Mm. And then I just started looking around. And I eventually, after a couple months, I found this place. Yeah. And then it was just magic. Now, it's, it's crazy because most people would say the restaurant industry is the riskiest there's so many businesses that close congrats on making it to year three by the way because most you. don't survive past year one yeah you know we'll celebrate again at the five year you know because that's the next big milestone that they usually track in the data points yeah but you know what gave you the confidence to really do this do you think it was all that serving experience before i think it's my everything experience like the serving the management yeah. um definitely the management because that's when i got to learn the back end of how to actually run the business mm. um 
that's why I shout out my last job because it was just like they were so informative like with the owners being able to sit down with me and just like going over like PL statements right mm-hmm. and just so that I can see and know mm-hmm. so that I'm prepared still wasn't prepared yeah. when I opened it yeah. but I was more prepared as opposed to if I didn't have that first-hand experience because yeah. I do have a business degree. Okay, I went to school for business, um, but still, it's a lot different when you're actually physically learning it. Yeah, yeah, and theory versus practice. So when once you actually jumped into creating your own, what were some of those surprises? Because you were probably, uh, I remember Everything. being in my job, right? I was so naive. I'm like, oh my God, this stuff's going to be so simple. I'm going to crush <laughs> this just like I crush it on my job. And then you get there and you're like, okay, where's my customer? Yes. Wait, where, where's my customer? Let me let me add them. And it's like, there's no customer here. No. You know, what was the, uh, so what were some of those shockers? Um, I feel like I was just, I was very nervous that it wouldn't. Nervous? I'm not getting a nervous vibe from you, though. Oh, I'm, I have high anxiety. Yeah. That's like, up till 4 a.m. <laughs> making a Christmas tree that doesn't even stand, eh? <laughs> uh, um, I got it set. I got it set. All right, all right. Um, Grinch. um i was very nervous very nervous at the sense that so we had our first two opening days Hmm. and um it was well Mm -hmm. every there was a lineup outside people like our first two days were great and then we closed on the sunday because we sold out of everything and i was just like we just thank you i was like we just need a break yeah and then the monday hit and I was just like, okay, let's keep it rolling. And then we probably had like 10 customers that day. Oh, wow. And then the Tuesday hit and it was just like, maybe we had eight customers that day. Wow. And I was just like, I was sitting here. I'm like, what if this doesn't work? Mm-hmm. And I was so nervous and so scared. And I had a person in my ear literally saying, don't mess this up. Like, right. don't mess this up. Like, Make be better. Nervous, eh? Do better. Oh, okay. So it was like they were pushing you to do better or trying to scare you into... It was it was said in a negative context. Okay. Um, and when the person that... When you constantly hear that, it's like instilling fear into you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then by the grace of God, because, you know, everything is possible through God. And without God, nothing is possible. But... Um, are you a spiritual person? I feel like spiritual or religious. Spiritual. Let's say yeah. spiritual. I'm getting there. Okay. I'm working on it. Okay. You know. Okay. Why, why do you ask? No, I don't know. Are you? Sounds like it. I am mm-hmm. very much so. I went through a huge period of my life when I was just like, I don't know what comes next. Hmm. And it was actually God who got me through it. But okay. like, I I grew up in a Christian home. I don't. My mom baptized me at the beginning of my whole depressive, when my depression started, because they thought it would probably cure me. And when, when was this, which, which period I was 12. Oh, okay. I was 12. Wow. But like, and then I just strayed so far away from God. I was just like, this ain't it for me. Mm-hmm. But then in the, like the past year, year and a half, mm-hmm. definitely rewalking my and, path. And what do you think drew you back to that? The isolation of nothingness. Hmm. So like, if you're saying that this place has been open for two and a half years now, mm-hmm. a year and a half ago, I was probably in the lowest part of my life. Wow. Like ever. Wow. Mm, one of the lowest it's, parts. So it sounds like it's been a little bit of a roller coaster. Oh, 100%. So before we get into this lowest part, I kind of want to, I'm curious about the opening because we're going chronological okay, order okay, yes, for a second because <laughs> we'll, we'll end up going all over the place, which is great. I love it. Yeah. Right? And that's the nature of conversation. But so these first two days were a hit. Yes. What do you think made those so successful? There's people watching this that everybody, every, so many people want to start a restaurant. You know, like, wh- why were your first two days so successful? I would say it was the love and support I got from people okay. and my friends mm-hmm. and my family. A lot of the first, the, the people in the first two days were friends and family. Okay. And I turn around and I think about it, like, I'm so happy that I'm actually a good person mm. that these people actually wanted to come out and support me. Mm-hmm. Because imagine I wasn't a good person. Yeah. Imagine I was, and I like I was seeing people that I haven't seen in like fifteen years show up. Wow. And I remember on the Sunday actually I was here because yeah. that's what I do, and I had my friend Matthew. Shout out Matthew. 
Hmm? Shout out Matthew. Shout out Matthew. Yeah. Um, big time lawyer. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, he was, he happened to be in town and he came by and I hadn't seen him from high school. It's crazy. And so you're talking about 10 years maybe. Yeah, yeah. And he came in and we sat down here for maybe like two hours just talking. And I was just like, why do you have to live in New York? Like it's so far. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now anytime he's in town, I always try to like connect okay. with him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the first two days were strictly mostly family and friends. Okay. And I love that. It, it felt good to feel the support and the love after seven months of trying to get this place open. Yeah. And then the first two weeks, the week, two weeks after that, it was slow. And I was very nervous and I was very scared because bills still have to be paid. People yeah. still have to be paid. Yeah. And then. Probably got food that's starting to go. You know what I mean? Oh, no. In the beginning stages, you always buy, like, in a smaller amount. Oh, okay. Um, and I'm still very much, like, I literally just asked my chef, do we need meats? Because mm -hmm. I'm not going to have a surplus. And then, A, I don't want to throw it out. And, B, I'm never going to serve bad food. Yeah. Um, so I'd much rather us be, like, right on the edge. Yeah. As yeah. opposed to being. I mean, it's always better to be, like, we're sold out. Come yeah. back tomorrow. 100%. Than, like, oh, damn, we're as opposed to up. getting nasty. Yeah. 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 All right, so you yeah, get yeah. to this low period now. So it's it's this two week period where you're like, the where the where the fear voice yeah. is starting to creep up. Yeah, you know. So how do you how how is this conversation with yourself starting to go, and what what are some of the moves that you did as a result? I was literally just always thinking about how to make more people come in here. We okay. were running promos, we were running deals, we were literally reaching out to people to be like, hey, come to Honey. No way. Yeah. How? And like where? On social media. Okay. Right? Um, I was doing everything in my power mm -hmm. to try to drive more people into this into mm -hmm. the store. And it was hard because A, not only on myself and like the person that was in my ear, but also like watching my staff. What if they were to say, this isn't going to work. I need to leave. Mm -hmm. Like it's not busy here. Yeah. Yeah. There's no point. She won't survive. Yeah. And they jump ship, right? Um, after those two weeks, it was actually quite the opposite. We couldn't control the amount of people that... And do you think it was a result of the efforts that you put in those two weeks prior? I would say yes, but also I got very much in tune with the influencer world. Okay. So I invited an influencer out here <laughs> and they... <Hey. laughs> No, I'm joking. <laughs> and they came and they had food and they put it on social media. Okay. And it was them. Um, and then the whole influencer community, once they got wind, everybody wanted to come in. Hmm. And I was giving out free food to all the influencers. Yeah. Um, and some people didn't understand why, but I was just like, the traction that they bring in off of a genuine experience. Yeah. Like, they're getting free food. They're not paying for the food. They don't have to say it's good. Yeah. Right? They're giving their honest opinion. Mm -hmm. So after that, I would say the next few months, just it was insane. Like, mm -hmm. lineups around the corner. People are now parking to figure out what these lineups are about. Wow. And it was fantastic. I loved yeah. it. We sold out all the time. Mm -hmm. um, Congrats. Thank you. Yeah. And that probably carried you for the next... Yeah. The, how, so how much... <laughs> I guess that was probably like what contributed to the first 100K in a year, right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. The power of social media. The power of social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like in our first year of business, we made almost 500K. Yeah, it's a huge. And that's step. hard. Of course. That's what? hard for a first business. Yeah. Um, what, what did that do to that fear voice? Absolutely nothing. That, so it's still, is it still talk to you to this day? To this day. What What are some of the things that it says now? Like, like, am I doing something wrong? Am I not doing something right? Do you right? not have enough proof? I feel like I internally battle with always not being good enough or saying what is next. Hmm. In the sense, um... You said you're not gonna cry. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm wondering. I'm wondering how deep I want to get. You just go deep, man. Um, like people don't really get an opportunity to meet you, right? Everybody just gets to try your food. This gives us an opportunity to connect with you on a deeper level. Yeah. Well, hopefully it's not 
you know, burning any bridges or something like that no. or putting people under bridges the bus. Are so then, all right, then. So if they're burned, like, walk us through the ashes. I feel like this is something I've never said out loud before. Yeah. I've internally thought it. Okay. But I've never said it out loud. All right. Breaking news. <laughs> but that person that was always in my ear. Yeah. Being that negative force was my dad. Wow. And a part of me feels that I can't accept my wins or acknowledge what is real in this concept is mm. because he's not here to celebrate them with me. Mm. And like, if he were to ever hear that, I'm sure, I don't know, but my, me and my dad cut ties about a year and a half ago. Wow. And it was just like, I was, I couldn't do it. We couldn't grow together. Yeah, yeah. And even though he is very much the reason that I have this restaurant, mm -hmm. and I'll always be thankful for that, he saw me as a child, and he saw me as his daughter, mm. and not as a business owner. Mm -hmm. um, that's same thing with my brothers. We cut ties as well. Yeah. So in order to have this, I had to give up a lot because yeah. if it if I, if I was presented the options. Sinead, do you want a successful restaurant or do you want your family? I would have always chosen my family. Mm -hmm. But then the option came, which one do I stick with? And now yeah. it's just like, now I have 11 people that are counting on me to pick them. Yeah. And I have bills and responsibilities that are counting on me to pick them. Mm -hmm. And it was also, I had to pick myself. Yeah. So, um, the proof, the fear, I feel like never goes away mm -hmm. because of the fact that I had to give up so much. Yeah. Wow. It's a, it's a lot to shed. It know? is. But the only way to really grow is to shed the old skin. You know, it is. oftentimes we're always like, what do we want more of? But it's really like, what do we what do we need less of in less order of. to make space for yeah. more? Right. But a lot of times I think about it's like when it comes to like mental capacity and kind of like owning your mental health, it's just like, yeah. are you, am I in the space to own my mental health? Mm. Because what happens if I start actually thinking about these things and trying to heal from these things? Yeah. What happens when it unravels? Mm. And will I be able to come back from the unraveling? How fast will I be able to come back from the unraveling? Yeah. So it's literally been three years of internalizing. Yeah. And eventually I will be able to be at the space where I can unravel mm -hmm. but i don't think i'm there yet hmm. and what is that do you think what part of what turned you towards that spirituality journey maybe yes. a year and a half ago 100 percent. because um at one point i literally was living in a hotel and i was like A, living in a hotel is expensive. Yeah. I'm also very bougie, so I wasn't living at no regular hotel. <laughs> yeah, of course. Look at, look at your lashes. Look at your nails. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you <laughs> Listen, when you try the cornbread, you're going to realize like why her hotel had to be like that. If your hotel wasn't like that, we wouldn't have the cornbread that we have. And just, and that's the, that's the thing. I feel like the more of a diva you are, the more of a, of a diva experience you can provide to guests. Right? Yeah. Like, it's the... the at the end of the day, like you, you provide the things that you would want for yourself. Yes, hundred percent. And maybe even a little bit more. Hundred percent. Where you're like, okay, if this is a great experience for me, I'm going to make this a great experience yeah. for others. You know, I find I'm one I, of those people. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to give you subpar and then go out and expect the best for myself. Yeah. Like yeah. it's just not. Doesn't add up. No. Yeah. No. So what? Uh, that must have been a. That was the low point that you're. That was a low about, point. Right? Um, and then living in this hotel, I literally had to be here all the time, so I'm paying ridiculous money to go shower and barely sleep to only be back here mm -hmm. um on the first night i call it my homeless period even though i very much wasn't in yeah. a sense but on the first night i slept in my car right here wow. in the honey parking lot wow and i was just like why i don't know but i felt like i just had to do it and then because i could have come in here but like it scares me in here because there's a cemetery right there. So I feel like there's ghosts in here at night. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Yeah. So what what uh, happened after that? You know, so you end up you end up at this low point. Mm -hmm. And how do you I keep sticking to this this table? My, my, I don't know <laughs> if it's leather or pleather or whatever, but the jacket's wavy. What do you think? <laughs> I like it. It's fire. Right? I like it. Yeah, thanks. I like it. Shout out my guy, Ricky from Poverty, you know, holding them down. 
But uh, yeah, so what, what what ended up happening after that? You're at this lowest point questioning, am I, is this thing really going to survive? Am I really going to make this thing fly? I feel um, like in that low point, my biggest concern was just finding somewhere to live. Yeah. Like honey is cool. Honey pays for itself. But I it was the summertime. We had summer festivals, we yeah. had catering orders. And now I'm now doing this by myself. Yeah. Like my dad is no longer here. Mm-hmm to help I'm doing this on my own yeah, yeah and then with also everything happening with that it's just like how do I be secure how do I feel secure in a space where I'm so afraid mm-hmm. right um but essentially I was talking to a realtor and I the place that I live at now I initially suggested it to her I was just like I seen this like this building opening up yeah um by honey and she kind of just blew past it okay unintentionally yeah. blew past it um, and then we went from place to place to place to place to place, to place just, just trying to find anywhere for me to live. Mm-hmm. And it was to the point where because I'm a business owner in the first year and a half. Nobody's qualifying. No. Yeah, headache. And I people were just like, it's too risky. This is like I was a one bedroom. I'm ready to pay twenty four hundred dollars a month. Yeah, yeah. And it's like they're just like, it's kind of risky. Yeah. I'm like, I'm paying five grand for a hotel that, and you're telling me I can't afford 23. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I was just like, I even one place I was just like, I'll pay for my whole rent the the whole year. I will pay for it up front. Mm-hmm. And they're like, mm, how'd you get the money? I'm like, okay, never mind. Yeah. Abort machine. <laughs> and then I right back to the hotel. You go <laughs> right back it's to the point where they knew me yeah. and they start asking questions. They're like, so are you going to check out? Yeah. It'd be like, eventually. Yeah. But um, I also Crazy. brought home food for them. Home, I brought food back for them, so they yeah, loved me. Of course. Um, but then I found the place, and literally when I walked in, he was just—I was just like, I, I, I need a place to live. Mm-hmm. What now? What do you? What do you think? Like around like running a business mixed with like your own financial security, uh-huh. and not necessarily financial security, but like mental security Mm -hmm. like just feeling kind of like safe and comfortable in an environment yeah like i don't know like just that relationship between like where it is that you live and finding peace within like your personal life the people around you in your personal life yes you know shedding maybe relationships things places people yes in your personal life versus growing do you think you would have been able to grow without doing that no so as i grow in this business yeah my personal life is also making that yeah. that change. So, like, my house right now is my peace. Mm-hmm. Only a handful of people have ever been there. Mm-hmm. And it's just because that's the only place that I can feel me. Mm-hmm. When I'm here, I'm the business owner. Mm-hmm. I am the cashier. I am the chef. I can't be me. Mm-hmm. And I always have to be that extrovert mm-hmm. when I'm very much an introvert. Mm-hmm. Very, very, very much an introvert. Yeah, yeah. And... As you make that growth, your personal life will see it too. Like friends, mm-hmm. I have some friends that I don't keep in contact as much as I would like to. Mm-hmm. And it's just because our worlds are different. Yeah. Our interests are different. Mm-hmm. Our mentalities are different. Mm-hmm. And it's a tough conversation to have, but you have to have those conversations or else people are gonna be like, oh, she got, she thinks she's too she's too good for me now. She got rich and switch. <laughs> and it's not, it's just like, yeah. I'm too tired to, go partying every weekend yeah it's just, i'm also here every weekend i, I can't right. <laughs> physically can't yeah so when did when did like uh so when did you the things finally start to pivot because you're in this like weird low period you know when does it start getting real like when does it start going crazy you know because i'm looking at I, I follow you on social i see your socials like yo i'm here yo, i'm here yo, i'm here Boom, 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 boom. One thing after the next, you know? Yeah. Like, honey's everywhere. I'm dripping all over my timeline. I love that. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> um, I feel like we kind of definitely were able to elevate in a sense when Jason, my business partner, finally jumped on board. Yeah. He came. Um, so Jason and I have always been friends. We've been friends for like 15, 16 years now. Okay. We got to get him on the next episode. Yes, Maybe not do. the next episode, but you One know, we'll them. get his story soon enough. Yeah. He's cool. Okay. And um, 
when Honey was just opening, he lived in here in Toronto, and I was always able to like bounce my ideas back and forth off yeah. of him. He's I was actually the one that tasted my entire menu because when I created the menu, I was still a vegetarian at the time. Oh no way! Yeah, I was a vegetarian for sixteen years. What? Yeah. And and what changed? Someone's like, "Yo, you gotta try this fried chicken." You know what? <laughs> I was actually in Vancouver and I saw a bacon pepperoni pizza like walk by me, and I'm like, "That's it. That's it. Done. That's it." And that yeah. was that was it. It was yeah. done. But um. Yeah, so Jason, and then, so after Honey opened a little bit in, Jason moved to Montreal for a year. Okay. Um, it sucks having the person you care so much about and your best friend live literally so far away. Mm-hmm. But um, after everything that was happening with my dad and like, you know, Honey, he came back and mm-hmm. he came to an event that we we're doing. And he's like, Shanae, I quit my job. And I was just like, why? Yeah. You're like, it was a good job. Mm-hmm. He's like, if I'm gonna live in Toronto, I only want to work here with, with you. Wow! And I was just like, okay. <laughs> so I- <laughs> at the time, like in the beginning stages, um, he was doing it completely out of the free will of his heart. Like yeah. he wasn't getting paid for it. Mm-hmm. Um, he was just like, I need you to trust me in this role mm-hmm. before you start paying me for this role. Wow! Um, and what was that that role that you thought? So he initially came on. I, I randomly threw it out there. I was like, oh, you want to be vice president, eh? You oh. want to be vice president. Oh, shit. okay. And then I seen his in, he, his Instagram change to Jason.VP. And I was just like. Oh, my bad. I was like, oh, okay, so we're, we're taking it my seriously. Bad. What is it? <laughs> we're taking it seriously. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's when I kind of knew he was committed. Yeah. And just seeing the level of work he was putting in mm-hmm. literally for free. I was just like, okay, cool. Let's get you on payroll. Yeah, and what were some of the things that he was he was handling? Automating everything. Yeah. Like taking complete control of catering. So we have a restaurant and mm-hmm. then we also have catering. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say ever since Jason jumped on, catering has been able to 10 times over. But that's just because now there's the capacity to do it. Yeah. I have that other person that I can rely on to send out invoices to curate menus because everybody kind of gets a special curated menu Mm -hmm. um and even just to help me facilitate the orders right so honey's everywhere honestly because i was able he was able to jump on board with me yeah so and did did he create that or did you say this is what i need or did you guys both just kind of see a need feel the need like how did that end up coming to fruition um so we always did catering beforehand Mm -hmm. um it's probably really tough it was tough definitely tough Mm -hmm. just because it it was me Mm -hmm. um but then i guess when he just came on board he kind of realized that's a place that i could use the most help in like running the day-to-day stuff i was okay with yeah um it it was the the catering yeah so that's where you start trying to take the thing and apply it here and take it and then apply it in this place in this place and then now he does the everyday stuff with me like on mondays we typically try to work so but like now we're down at billy bishop on mondays yeah um but yeah, he's definitely, he himself evolved as a human being. That's cool to see. And I love to be able to, he was like, in the beginning, he's like, I'm never going to work in the kitchen. Yeah. And like, now you'll come in and be like, so They're what do you sweating. want? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so That's cool. It's crazy to see how like your business works on you more than you work on it. You yeah. know, like you, you even mentioned that have like this machine has evolved you as a person. Yeah. You know, and it's crazy to see the lessons that it's taught you. Um, so would you say when the catering came in, that was when you guys crossed that 100K a month? Yes. So we crossed the 100K a month um, recently. Congrats. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you. And it's not, I, I guess it's a win. Yeah. 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 It's a win. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Eventually. Yeah. 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 Um, but it's it kind of like we always do. We do great numbers here. Yeah. We do great numbers here. We don't have to get into it. You oh, guys yeah. are a private company. Yeah. We're not pocket watching. You know oh, no. I mean? we're oh, just, no. We're just a little curious. Oh, yeah. no. We do great, but <laughs> yeah. we had a really good catering order that was able to take us above the 100K. Yeah. So. How, did, how did you get it? Did, was it outreach? Did they come inbound? Was it an ad? Was it word of mouth? Where did it Where did it come from? Wildly enough, it was a little bit of everything. Okay. Um, So... Can I talk about them? It's, it's up to you. I don't care. It's, okay. You're a customer. If you want to, if you want to shout them out, shout them out. Okay. You know so what I, mean? I don't know if it's 
to, nah. to yeah, talk nah. about Okay, so we're talking, talking about, about our yeah. recent catering order with the Legacy Awards. So I love them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were um we were the official caterers for the Legacy Awards that just passed by. Yeah. And um it was one morning I got an email that said like proposal submittal for mm-hmm. Legacy Awards. And I was just like and I was literally talking to Jason, it was like 7 a.m. I was just like, did it's you not, see that email? It's not real. Uh, is this real? Because it was also a holiday. Okay. And I was just like, did they mean to send this to us yeah. on a holiday Monday? Yeah. <laughs> but essentially, I think she was actually supposed to send it the next day. Okay. But if she clicked 8 a.m. send. Yeah. So no, it was 8 a.m. when I got the message. Okay. Yeah. And um, we read it. And she wanted us to submit a proposal to do the catering for the Legacy Awards. Wow. And I was just like, that's insane. Because last year, um, we have another person we love, Marley. She had asked me to um, be part of the swag bags. Okay. And I was like, okay, cool. So we donated, like, cornbread and sweet teas and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then I really wanted, I really wanted to go, like, so badly. And I couldn't get a ticket. And I remember watching the show that previous year. And... They were just they were just like, and shout out to Wes Hall, the man who made it all happen. And I was like, my uncle's sitting there at the at the at the, <laughs> at, the at the award show that I want to be at, and I'm not there. Yeah, yeah. But so I was like, next year, I'm there. I'm there. Eh? Little did I know I'd be there in a different capacity. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, behind the scenes access, right? Different. Oh God. <laughs> um. <laughs> so. So yeah, Camille asked us to submit a proposal, and hey, I said, shout "Cool." Out Camille. I love her. Yeah, she's awesome. And we submitted a proposal. They love the proposal. And they're like, can we do a tasting? Mm. I was like, yeah, of course, let's do a tasting. Yeah, that's And cool. so we set up a tasting. And when we're at the tasting, we're seeing all like the different parties that are coming in. Mm. And I see our friend Morgan walking in. I'm like, is that Morgan? Mm. Shout out Morgan. Shout out Morgan. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, that's Morgan. She's the she's the liaison for the clients. And I was just like, Morgan's the liaison? I was yeah, just like, yeah. oh my God, she loves her food. She loves <laughs> yeah, us. Like. Yeah. That was like the comfort I needed. Yeah. I looked at Jason. I was like, Jason, it's Morgan. And he's like, oh. It's gang. And we just killed it. Yeah, yeah. And we yeah. killed it. The, their menu was fantastic. Mm-hmm. They loved everything. So did they come to you with the menu ideas or? No, we like, went straight to them. Okay. And that we were just the, like. That was in the proposal. Yeah, that was okay. in the proposal. And it was just because we're catering to the black community. Yeah. I'm not going to give you, you know exactly what we need. an Alfredo Linguini. Like, Why not? We need, we need. No, Alfredo. you got oxtail egg rolls uh-huh. and you got jerk chicken cornbread cupcakes. What else did we get? What else did we get? We got a black rum cheesecake. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. No right. Set. If you want more, you're going to have to come here. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it was fantastic. And um, they actually said this really cute thing at the tasting. They're just like, next time we go through the site visit, we need to bring Sinead with us. And, the, and I wasn't sure if I was supposed to hear it. But I heard it and I looked at Jason. I was like, I'm not crying. You're crying. It's ours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then awesome. afterwards, we sat down, we tasted all the food. We're like, damn, this food's really good. Yeah, <laughs> We're just like, yeah. yes. Ain't vegetarian no more. No, yeah, wow, yeah, no. It was time, done. It was done. <laughs> yeah. But um, so. yeah. And then we did the Legacy Lip for words. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, it was really cool to like, I was talking to my uncle about it. Mm-hmm. So I have a famous uncle. Okay. His name is Wes Hall. Oh, I thought you were going to say his name is Javon. I'm like, I'm not your uncle. <laughs> you are famous. I'm joking. I'm joking. Stop. You're the famous one. Yeah. Barely. Yeah. Um, so I was talking to my uncle. Mm-hmm. He's like my mentor. Yeah. I love everything about him. I think a huge part of who I am today is because I was able to watch him growing up. And the one thing he always instilled in me is that if there is a glass ceiling, you kick that out like Mm -hmm. whatever door isn't opening for you either find a way through that door or make a new door Mm. make a new door and so i've always had that mentality and but um yeah so wes is a huge inspiration in my life and like anytime there's any like good things that are happening in my life i always just tell him because it's just like i want him to be so proud of me in a sense and um i remember i told him about legacy words he's like yeah i heard like how are you feeling are you excited and knowing that he's on the board of directors i was like (laughs) i'm ready (laughs) (laughs) but um he was really cool he was amazing yeah so and it felt really good when i was there in that space Mm -hmm. to see him looking around and looking at me Mm -hmm. like around he was like with all these important people and i was just like are you a vegetarian 
<laughs> what's, so what's crazy is that like do you think he looks at you like a business owner or does he look yes. at you like a niece no i would say i would say yes to the business owner yeah. part and that's why there's that respect in a sense mm-hmm. um but he's also like super busy yeah he's yeah. like super busy so it's hard for me to get that one-on-one time that i would love to have yeah and i know that like like my mom says it all the time i was like you know you can just reach out to him like you we could just go over to the house i'd be like no yeah he's a busy man let's not yeah. do that with my stupidity really? <laughs> like, yeah. what would but, you um, what would you want to ask him everything yeah. Just put me in your shadow and let me follow you everywhere. So yeah. I could be the best version of myself. Like through his reflection, huh. in a sense, like yeah, he yeah. is phenomenal. He does so many things. Like I remember hearing something that said, if Wes Hall's calling you, there is never a person that's going to be like, let me put, let me call him back. Mm. And I'm just like, that's power. Mm. that's probably we went to his cottage for a fundraiser a couple weekends ago and when i say by the time it drops it's gonna be a couple months ago but oh yeah. Okay. yeah yeah a while ago we went up to oh, the wow. cottage yeah. <laughs> and no firstly the property is amazing okay and to know that a black man owns a property that like mm. that is a inspiration on its own yeah and b i had said to him one time out of the stupidness of my heart that he he had asked me if i wanted for him to set me up a meeting with somebody and i was just like no i won't do it on my own i can get there Mm -hmm. i can meet them i can do it and now do you think that's what what is that is that ego is that trauma do you think like because i feel that way too right like part of it is i've never gotten i've never really gotten a handout like that yeah and it's like don't want to do it with no handouts but it's like dude just take sponsorship that's what he said he was just like yeah other cultures other people run off of nepotism Uh why aren't you and i'm just like I want to be able to say that I did it and not that I was given it. But at what point is it like you do it yourself or someone gives it to you? Because at the end of the day, you're not making your own 100K yeah. catering order. Like you're not going to you're never going to order 100K worth of food from honey. Like someone's got to order it. Yeah. Right. So like and even if like we're coming here to eat, someone's got to make the food for me. Yeah. I'm like, I, I made it myself. Like yeah. I went into the the field and milled that flour and milk the cow <laughs> and churn the butter. Like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like someone's got to make it for me. Yeah. I know. I get that part. Yeah. But it's like, imagine if I had a successful restaurant yeah. and they'd be like, yeah, but she's what's Hall's niece. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. probably just gave it to her. Yeah. Or he probably just paid for it. Like so, she didn't so, actually work for it. So at what point will you, what will, will it be enough? to actually take it then i believe that when it comes to like the successful like the connections that we know yeah there will be a place for them to come in when it's time so like for example when i need advice when it comes to franchising Mm -hmm. i'm gonna go to my uncle Mm -hmm. and i'll be like so who can you tell me who or who can you put me in contact with where i can get information about franchising yeah but essentially the late that person he wanted to connect us with Uh and i said no to she was at the cottage that oh, weekend that's crazy. and he came over to me and me and Jason are nervous because we're once again, the youngest people in the room. Of course. And New environment. we're just like, and he said, you want to do this on your own? Go do it. This is CIBC. That is RIBC. That RIBC. RBC. Gotcha. RBC yeah, yeah, yeah. That is Scotiabank right there. That uh-huh. is TIFF. Mm-hmm. That is ETOP. Go. And he didn't even have to tell me twice. I was out. I was talking to everybody, mm. and that one person we wanted to connect You're an with. Introvert coming out. Listen, when my uncle says move, you, I'm gonna not embarrass him. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I had no business being in yeah, that room. Yeah. But he wanted us there because of our cornbread, and weirdly enough, our cornbread was a hit. But like we were. With, I mean, are you, were you surprised? I mean, no, no, I wasn't surprised. Yeah, Disrespect my friend and her cornbread. Eh? <laughs> but I think I was surprised at how well it did. Like mm. the waiter was just like, I can't even get outside yeah. before it's all gone. Yeah. Like I have to find different routes. Yeah. And I was like, that's amazing. Talk your shit then. But yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. But we were there. Your shoulders a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. And we were there with um, Chef Lonnie and Trey Sanderson. No. Top true. Chef. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Top no, Chef. No, I bumped. Man, Trey, I'm sorry, dude. I bumped into you at the Legacy Awards. We were supposed to do an yes. interview on the black carpet. And uh, you know who's you know who actually showed up after? And they're like, yo, get him. 
Well, I saw. Oh, and, yeah. and, it, and it ended up being <laughs> it ended up being Wes and Tafari in the clip went viral. Yes. Yeah, you know? I remember. So, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, that. that's uh. Yeah, Tafari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we might do a tasting or something. We'll figure something out. Yeah. We'll do more. We'll, yeah. I don't know. Anyways. So anyways. that's Trey. Okay. He is amazing. And then Chef Lonnie is the owner of uh, Miss Licklemore's. Oh no way! Okay. So, like, just being able to be, and I was just watching them work. Yeah. I was just like. Okay, okay. Because, yeah, like, to learn cool from them would be amazing. Yeah. And th- it was more of an intimate setting. Even though there was, like, 100 people there, it was, like, yeah. more of an intimate setting. Especially if you guys are, like, the, the chefs in the place. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, no, this is just us three chefs right now yeah. holding it down. Or yeah. I wasn't a chef. I just brought cornbread. Okay, my bad. I just, I just so, brought, But they like, were the chefs. You made, like, you still made a food product. Like, what? Yeah. at what point do you call yourself a chef? Right? I, I don't at all. Yeah. Because yeah, fair enough. I, in the past three years, yeah. I've cooked maybe four four times yeah okay like personally in my own like i feel like after being around food all day and actually cooking food here to think about going home and cooking food is insane not a chance like i'm glad i don't have kids because they'd be dead because they'd be starving (laughs) (laughs) or they could just come here and eat cornbread all day i'm not mad that's what my niece and nephew do they come here and they eat if you're if you're hungry yeah it's either going out to eat we're going to honey yeah pick one food business versus chef I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. I'm a visionary. Yeah. That's what I call myself. Okay. I'm a visionary um, because I want to be a serial entrepreneur. I want a million. How much? A million businesses. Oh, a million. I was like, (laughs) a million dollars. That's it. Oh, no. That's it. What? Okay. I need Uh, a million of millions. Okay. okay. All right. But. um, Race you to it. (laughs) Let's go. The race is on. But. um. Yeah, so we were, she was there at the cottage yeah. and um, she had my cornbread in her hand and she was eating it. And yeah. I knew that was my moment. I that walked right it. up to her. I was like, What's so how's thing? that cornbread? Uh-huh. And she's like, it's so good. Yeah. I was like, thank you. And she's like, are you the one, are you the chef? I'm like, it's my recipe. Oh, yeah. now you're holding the chef. Okay. Oh. oh, that's my recipe. Okay. I was like, that's very, my recipe. Very typical my recipe. around the language. Okay, it matters. And then I told her who we were and yeah. where to find us. Okay. And she's like, you're in Billy Bishop before... Like you're at Pearson, uh, and I was just like, yeah. And she's like, I'm mad, and I was just like, okay. Uh, so so now we are so setting up a meeting. Send the proposal then. In order to yeah. <laughs> figure out how to get us in Pearson. Okay. But okay. I had said to my uncle, like, I could do it on my own. Mm. Just put me in the right rooms. Yeah. If yeah. I'm in the right spaces. Yeah. I could do it. Yeah. I don't need a, or I don't want a please listen to this person because I'm important. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like that's the way I would even conduct myself with, like, my niece. If my niece wants to do something, if she, she wants to go to NYU, if I happen to know that the dean of NYU, I'm not going to set up a meeting. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be like, put them in the right room. You make your way in. Yeah, yeah. But that's still nepotism in a sense. Is it? Like yeah. At what point is it not, though? You know? Nepotism is not a bad thing. Yeah. Oh, is it, has your perspective changed? Or no. is it still the same? Or like, what's well, the so Wes is trying to tell me to use the nepotism yeah. because non-people of color do it all the time. Yeah, non-people. <laughs> non-people <Sorry>. of color. <laughs> um, yeah. White people. Um, yeah. huh? mm-hmm. um, other people. <laughs> um, other you, people. You people. <laughs> different people. <laughs> Some people yeah. will be... Okay, no network could drop us, bro. It's our show. Our world. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, keep going. Some people will be VPs and CEOs of companies that they have no business being mm. in that position for. And that's just because of whoever they play golf with. Yeah. yeah. Whoever their dad played golf with. Yeah. Right. So I feel like I understand the idea that us as a black community need to be there and support each other. Yeah. But I do that in different senses. Like, when it comes to our coffee that we drink, we use 850 coffee. Shout out, Muna. Shout out, Muna. Yeah. When it comes to our honey, we use Lingdom Honey. No, I can. can. Right? I'm taking that one. That's my alley eh? Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. Check you the receipts. You know what's wild? What's up? Was it you? I think we met him before you. No way. Yeah. And oh, and I'm then see right now. And then what? Okay, we know I take it back. I take yeah, it back. Yeah, it was yeah, you. It was yeah, you. Yeah. It was you that made the initial connect. And then Jason had said, you know what? I got his honey already. But well, you're so funny. No, you 
the receipt. Okay. It was yes. you. Yeah, it yeah. was you, yeah. Hey, this is for all for unsolicited intro. I know neither of you asked, but we got two beautiful souls who love food and honey. Mm. Yes, it was I'm you. I'm so happy. 100% I'm, it was you. I mean, it just made sense. Like, it's just like honey and honey yeah. and sweetas and sweetas. Bro, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so Ken's I'll amazing. But you so, see, that's how I, and I would support for the people i know yeah, right yeah um we eventually want to have something in the concept of like a like a retail wall in a sense okay. oh dope and that's just going to be like i could then go right put, there under the tv that would be perfect right so yeah. we're doing renovations in here this week okay, so okay. i'm very excited for that to see how it kind of turns out yeah but um we want to be able to put other black brands in here yeah like it's one dope. of my biggest things i love working sweet and nice ice cream okay i love working with them I love eating their ice cream. Yeah. Um, but yeah. That's that's really dope. So when do you think you would be enough that if you call people, they'd be like, oh my God, Shanae's calling. Like, let me drop everything and answer. I feel like after we have a few franchises with the Cornbread Cafe. Yeah. So is that kind of like the vision? Is that yes. what you're seeing? That's what As we're the, kind of running with and right I know now. It's not going to be the end all be all. It's not going to be the final move no. but it's just like is that the next right move you think yeah so we, we want to focus on franchising so mm -hmm. another way of helping um generational poverty ending generational poverty yeah. is through ownership right if people want to be business owners even mm -hmm. if it's your side hustle in a sense mm -hmm. it's hard to get into ownership because it's so expensive mm -hmm. like i remember when i was leaving my last job and i said i was opening a restaurant they're just like why don't you just get another whatever the brand was. And I was just like, it's about 250K signing fee. And then you have to show that you have 500K to support the brand. Yeah. And it's just like, we don't have that kind of money around here. Mm -hmm. I have 100K and I'm gonna open this restaurant with 100K. Yeah. And um, we made it work. And now I have that company looks me up on LinkedIn like every week. They'd be like, oh, somebody from is looking you up. But I'd be like, I know that's right. <laughs> that's cool. But, um. Ownership. Yeah. We want to put in through ownership with Cornbread Cafe. Cornbread Cafe, it's so easy to open up. Mm -hmm. Our like the the fee is under fifty k. Mm. It's it's gonna be amazing. So it's like, I like when I say fee, I mean like the whole process, whole setup and everything. Um, the whole setup. We work with a realtor to be able to get you a spot. Oh no way. Um, I'm making it as easy as possible mm -hmm. so that we can get BIPOC people into the sense of ownership and be able to elevate themselves through it because mm. i'm 29 i can relatively do whatever i want at this point in time in my life yeah and that's just because a people believe in me mm -hmm. believe in my brand but also because i'm smart mm. so what's a what's a day like has shanae look like this is something that i want to add i was just thinking about it this morning because I'm, I'm gonna turn it into a book once i get my 100 ways i'm gonna publish some shit but it would be I really cool that like to add like a day in the life of this business owner in each yeah. as each way right like so as a restaurant owner a soon to be franchisee yeah. franchisor you know grr, you know multi multifaceted more than just some good lashes and good makeup you know what i'm saying what, okay. what uh like what does that day look like you know typical day it's fucking next tuesday you know like what does next tuesday look like for you i honestly i wake up i check oh. emails yeah I check Instagram, see what's popping, what's okay. happening. Um, I am a sunriser, so whenever the sun comes up, I'm okay. up. Yeah. I don't close the blinds in my apartments. Okay. The curtains, they never, they stay open. All right. um, and that's just because I like rising when the sun mm -hmm. comes up. Um, after, well, after you just finished saying you hate mornings, that's crazy. You know what's wild? I take a, like a nap. Okay. Like when the sun comes up at like like right now it's around the seven thirty range. You're ready. For, you're ready for a nap right now. I take a nap around eight forty five. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I even, after the sun's yeah. up and I've checked my socials yeah. and my emails, yeah. um, I see what's happening for the day. Who's working? Okay. And then I'll wake up around like the nine thirty range. Mm -hmm. um, shower, get ready, and then it's typically head to the supplier to pick up stuff if I need stuff. Okay. And then come here. And typically the workday starts at 12. Mm -hmm. um, if we're not doing a Billy Bishop drop, it depends on who's doing it, Jason or I. Mm -hmm. And then we work until roughly 9, 9.30. Wow. And then we go home. We try to eat in between time, mm -hmm. if we remember. Yeah. And what does work for you look like at this time? 
I guess it's probably putting out whatever fire really pops up, right? Yeah. So a lot of times it's like on like earlier in the week, it's mm-hmm. like payroll, it's uh, paperwork, mm-hmm. setting up catering orders, like like putting it in like uh, a system so yeah. that my staff knows what to do and what to expect for the week. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why when last minute catering orders pop up, it's kind of like, uh, because it's like now we got to throw it into the system yeah um but yeah a typical day is just honestly customers come in they order their food they call in and it's just about prepping it a lot of times we get a lot of like lunchtime catering orders and they want their lunch time their lunch for like 11 30 mm. so we'll be getting here at like 7 a.m to start that up Okay. So that we're able to leave at like the 10 30 range whenever to go drop it off. What percentage would you say is like retail versus catering? Um and not in volume of orders, but volume of volume of income. I would say honestly, I'd probably say they're smack 50-50. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Because or oh, you said income? Yeah. Ooh. I would say they're smack about 50 50. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's hard to say like which one would do is like bringing in more mm-hmm. in a sense when mm-hmm. it's like, like last week we had probably like one or two catering orders, mm-hmm. but like the restaurant was still so popping. But like there's been some weeks where we have like two or three catering orders a day. Slammed. And it's like all week. And then, but the restaurant's still happening. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, but then the restaurant also flows with itself. Like we realized like during like the beginning of the month when mm-hmm. it's rent time, we're a slower, but the middle of the month, everybody wants honey, mm-hmm. right? Whenever we're trending, everybody wants honey. Oh, no way. Yeah. So okay. yeah. Dope, dope, dope. So you've been so gracious with your time. Share a little bit of your sweetness with us today. And uh, oh, I actually have I'll- a gift for you. You have a gift for me? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm honored. I'll have some gifts for you once we end up. You said this will come out in a few months, right? Yeah. yeah okay, yeah, perfect. Yeah. So you got some time. Okay. You know what I mean? Why is that perfect? Is that related to the gift? Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. We'll take a look at what the gift is pretty soon. Um, but if you were to go um, like back, you know, Shanae at her lowest, mm-hmm. you know, which one was that? Would you say that was that year and a half in? Yeah. Would you say it was the two weeks in? Which one? Which one? I would say the lowest point was the year and a half in because yeah. it was at that point where I had to walk away from my dad. I had to walk away from my home and I didn't know how to do it on my own. Yeah. My best friend lived in Montreal. Mm. Um, I didn't, I didn't have anybody that I could relatively count on. Mm -hmm. And like, I remember one time I was here and my anxiety, I could feel my anxiety, but like we had orders. I hit, there was nothing I could do. And then it kind of just took over. And I just like, like I fell below here and I just started crying. And my staff was like standing over there and she like Mm -hmm. looked at me and she was just like, and I was just sobbing on the floor, like completely sob. I didn't know what to do. And then afterwards, she was like, she she wasn't sure if she should stop or keep going. Mm. And then like after like a minute or two, I was just like, okay, back to life. Let's do it. Yeah. And then she said to me like a while ago, <laughs> honestly, I'm like, I'm a silent crier. Okay. So like, I will be crying and nobody will know because mm. I don't make a sound. You'll probably just see a tear run mm. down my face. But like after I got back up, or a couple of weeks later, she was like, what should I have done? I was just like, absolutely nothing. You did it. You did it perfect. There was nothing to do. Like, yeah. don't come and hug me. I don't like being touched. <laughs> don't do any of that. Just yeah. let me have my moment. Sometimes mm-hmm. it becomes too much mm-hmm. and I need a moment. What do you think uh, you would tell yourself? Like, what would this Shanae tell that Shanae? See, that's where my spirituality comes into it. Yeah. So I would be like, well, enter the spirit just, world. Just What's up? lean on God. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of times, and I feel like that's where I get a lot of my peace from now as well. Mm-hmm. Instead of overthinking it, yeah, realize that God's not going to put you somewhere that you're not meant to be. Hmm. So it's my human nature to be like, okay, well, how am I going to get this done? How am I going to get that done? When realistic, it's just like leave it to God. Mm. Let it go. Let it go and let God deal with it because He wants you here. And he's going to take you exactly. And there has been times, like, especially in the beginning, where it's just like, 
I don't know how I'm going to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how I'm going to make ends meet. And then all of a sudden we'll get a catering order that's due in like three weeks and they pay for it today. And I'm just like, that's God. Because the universe. Yeah. That's what it is. Right. So it's like, yeah. So where can, uh, well, thank you. You know, like I mentioned before, for sharing a little bit of your sweetness with us. I appreciate you. Now, what can the audience do to help you? You know, like you've been so gracious with your time today. You've what? It's been a couple hours. Well, I mean, like probably about an hour, hour and change yeah. on the conversation, a little bit longer on the setup. You know, you've gone in depth. You you shared things with us that you probably haven't shared with anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, you I showed. Has, a, I said the, that one. You you showed the the other side of the cornbread. You know, um, what can we do to help? Honestly support a black business any black business mm. and support a black business with kindness in your heart mm. i always always say that black people hold black businesses to a higher standard mm. in the sense where they're either expecting better or they're expecting worse um a lot of our negativity that we get comes from the black community wow. and um I feel like that was also one of my biggest things I wasn't expecting or ready for. Hmm. I had a guy come in here and completely, I was actually on a class. So I'm part of the foodpreneur program and I was in a class. Shout out Janice. Hi. (laughs) Um, I was literally in class while I'm working Hmm. and I was like trying to tune in, but then he came and he was still looking at the board. He wasn't ready. And he's just like, this is why I can't come in and support black owned businesses. You can't even give me your time. You're on your phone. And he's just like, this is why you can't hire people. And then I, I said to him, I'm like, I'm actually the owner and I'm in class. I'm in class trying to run this business and you're not even ready to order yet. Yeah. I was like, what can I get you? He's like, I'm not ready. I'm like, so why are you yelling at me right now? Yeah. And he's just like, oh, I never knew you were the owner. I'm like, it doesn't matter. It yeah. doesn't matter. I'm not click clacking your girlfriend away right now like right. so i told him to leave yeah i said respectfully bounce you're not the one for you're not my customer yeah. and he got mad at me and he left me a horrible google review That's fine. um saying i kicked him out of his rest out of the restaurant i mean bro you come in here with misconducting behavior you, you deserve to be right and i feel like a lot of times it's just the approach yeah. if he had said hey i'm ready to order yeah like you know but he was just like this is why i can't support black businesses this is why you can't hire people and i'm just like it's me. Yeah, I'm the owner. I'm here. But thank you. And Bye. I don't. But yeah, I feel like black people, we need to hold, we need to be kinder to each other. Mm. And we need to remember that we're human and we make mistakes just yeah. like McDonald's and Tim Hortons does. Yeah. And y'all will go back there, but you will swear on your mama that you're never going to come back here because One time. I gave you sweet jerk wings instead of honey garlic. Well, it still tastes anyways. good. Yeah. <laughs> I've had people do that. It, leave a Google review. One girl left me a one star Google review because I don't respond to my other Google reviews. She's like, the food was really good, but she doesn't care about her customers because she doesn't respond to the Google review. So one star. And even though I tried to challenge it with Google, they're just like, no. And I was like, OK. Oh, but yeah. it's just like, why would you need to do that? Yeah. Like that's that's the opposite of support. You know, like, yeah, why would I don't know. Or one lady had said, um, she had said, I didn't have a good experience. I waited more than 20 minutes for my food. Um, I'm going to take this up with the business owner. I don't think that this is right. One star. And I said, respectfully, you went on to Google to tell the world that I wasn't worthy of anything. You're speaking to the business owner. There's nothing I can do for you. I was just like, you could have called me. Mm -hmm. You could have DM'd us. You could have emailed us you could have done so many other routes to try to resolve your problem yeah over a 20 minute wait for fresh food everything's fresh eh? when you see the wings them wings are still clucking like they're they're (laughs) it's not it's not and that's why we have an open kitchen right it's not like we don't serve frozen products yeah Everything is fresh, right? Mm. If you come and get a mac and cheese, we're not giving you mac and cheese that was made this morning. No. We're not giving you, like, everything is made fresh. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, there was other methods. And I think she had messaged, she had said she's a business owner herself, so she knows the importance or whatever of, like, timeliness and something. I was just like, as a business owner, I hope your customers 
treat you with some kindness yeah. and reach out to you privately mm-hmm. as opposed to going to Google. Because once you put a Google review, you can't, you you can't, can't edit it. You can't take it back, dude. You can't set in stone. That's like... Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, thanks, but no thanks. Yeah. So another thing that you might be able to do is when you come try it, leave a good review. Actually, leave an honest review. Leave an and, honest review. And look, if you're upset with something, take it up with a business owner. Yeah. Instead I always believe of, in that. Yeah. If anything, yeah. reach out to the business first yeah. before you go to Google. And it's so funny because people like, it's like, who are you complaining to? Like, if you really want someone to get better, like, be nice about it. And they'll say that too, eh? They'll be like, yeah. oh, I'm only doing this constructively. But the, are you? Yeah, you're not. Like, send them a message. Like, yeah. they're accessible. <laughs> You Everywhere. Know? And now you and now you got to meet her, right? So yeah. That's that. Well, I'm name? just trying. I'm just a girl who's trying yeah. her best. I'm excited to see you know the, the next chapters of your story unfold. Me too. You got time to eat or what? Of course, yeah. You do you wanna eat together? You wanna eat? Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. Should we make it a mukbang? Yeah, if you're listening to the podcast and wanna hang with us as we eat some lunch. Uh, you could see the extended version on YouTube, but we'll, okay. we'll see what we can turn it into. So okay. super excited. Thanks so much for tuning in. We will see you on the next episode. Peace. You know what we got here? These okay. fries are fucking delicious. You know, all right. Are you bringing your food closer? You're going to reach over us. I'll return to UK. <laughs> I'm going to eat it. I'm going to make it disappear. Over here, we got some of our honey style fries. Okay. Uh, we have our jalapeno cornbread. Oh, we have our Cajun shrimp. We have our mac pie that's baked. Oh, what juice do we have? Mm, it's like a strawberry, pineapple, watermelon. All my favorite things. Damn, what's sauce? What are you I'm, eating? What am I eating? Everything. Okay, so you're having the shrimp. Yeah, the mango what's... aioli. The mango aioli. So that's our signature sauce. It goes right on top. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It ain't a secret. It should be. <laughs> oh, no. I use vinegar and I still use oil, but I add fruit essence to it. You add who? Fruit. Who? Fruit. Mm. So it'll be like a strawberry vinegar or a smoked peach. Oh, yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> I'm tasting this juice. I'm like, this is good. <laughs> wow, I'm going to up and right back down. Switch. You can switch this. Fill this. Here now. It gets overwhelming when you do that. You know why? Why? Because it looks like I haven't even practiced <laughs> scratched the surface. Let me leave the empty plate. <laughs> the shrimp was crazy, though. I'll give you that. You did a great job. Whatever this wing is. Let me see that one. It's crazy. No, don't even look at it. I you can't know even what? Tell. <laughs> you know why? Because you gave me all the drums and you said all the flats. You're disrespectful. Honest, I only eat flats. Ever since eating meat, I was just like, I realized I only like flat wings. You know what? The mark <laughs> of good food makes someone shut the yeah. uh, shut up. We one time we had like a group of boys in here and they were so loud. <sighs> and then all of a sudden I didn't hear nothing. I was just like, what the hell? And I looked over and they're just eating. Uh-huh. And I was just like, how is it? And they're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> how's it? What is it? What is it? Mm-hmm. Jalapeno cornbread. Fucking fire. Do you have a favorite cuisine? Soul food? Or? Honestly, Italian. Italian? I love me some fresh pasta. Just, just it. Just when more. your hands get all dirty. Girl, it's too late for that. You know you what, need Jason? Wet naps. You guys need wet naps here. You know what? Yeah. Yeah, because look at you. We're going to. Look at you out here. Look at your you fingers. Don't. I do, I do. I'm not licking these though. <laughs> not, on, not on camera. Okay, can you edit that out? No. <laughs> bro, this wing is fire, bro. I think the one that you're having is the. No matter what it is, it's amazing. It's like a barbecue flavor. I don't know what it is. It's great. You see, now I'm at this dilemma, right? Where you need where you need wet naps. You know. Lick your fingers. No. Lick your fingers. <laughs> Someone told me that's the best part of the wing, eh? No. <laughs> that, that, someone no. said that's the best part of the no, wing. No, no, no. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> you're gonna. Den- you're, there we go. <laughs> all right. All right, all right. That all felt right. good, though. I did. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is still dangerous. steaming, bro. I don't high. get it. It's hot. Yeah. Honestly, I always say this whenever a restaurant opens up and it's opening up on hype. Yeah. It won't be the best. Thank you yeah. for, uh, I'm happy for having you. me. Appreciate you. Always. Until uh, until next time. And I don't know if this is going to be for certain or not, but if you yell at the top of your lungs when you get in here and say, honey, I'm home, they may or may not give you cornbread. Don't quote me, but make sure if you are going to leave a review, leave an honest one. 
And uh, yeah, see you in the next episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Peace. Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of 100 Ways to Make 100K, the show where we're on the hunt to find 100 different ways to make 100 grand a month. I'm so happy that you got to meet Shanae and hear the little piece of her story so far. And we can't wait to see where it unfolds and continues to do so. So make sure you follow her online. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you drop a comment. Make sure you drop a review. And we will see you on the next episode. Peace.